Shabbat Shalom, people of the Most High. This is your brother L. We are here with another edition of Victory, Success, and Destiny online broadcast. The Most High Yah, He is surely the Elohim of supreme discipline, supreme order, and supreme righteousness. The Most High is all powerful and has dominance over all of the universe as He sits on top of the seventh heaven. He is the Father of creation. He is the one who manifested His only brought forth Son. Yeshua Hamashiach who sits at the right hand of his majesty and he will rule all worlds and all nations with an iron rod with a scepter of majesty he is our light he is our wisdom he is our truth he is our love he reigns over all the north the east the south and the west and he will gather unto himself all men because he has been lifted up and he made the declaration and said if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto to me and he has trampled upon the head of the serpent he has crushed the dragon with seven heads and we thank the most high through Yeshua Hamashiach for victory success and destiny hallelujah I was gonna speak on this particular topic that we're gonna speak on today on Wednesday but due to events that transpired during the week we went a whole nother direction on Wednesday but today we're gonna pick back up with what I was going to initially speak on on Wednesday today and moving forward I want to focus on something here's what I want to focus on us as people as human beings we have within us something called sin some people don't like to speak on this but it's the truth we have within us s i n sin and we know that the scripture says that the wages of sin is death so the opposite of death is life is it not so if the wages of sin is death then common sense says the opposite would be the wages of righteousness is life. Now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not the most intelligent man. But I think that I got that right. I think that if the wages of sin is death, then the wages of righteousness will be life. And I think that if sin is conquered, then that means death will be conquered as well. And one of the rewards of conquering sin and death is to inherit life, right? Now, let me know if I'm wrong here because I'm open to be corrected. The scripture says that only a fool rejects correction. But right now, in my little pea brain, I'm thinking that if we conquer sin and death, then we will reap the rewards of life. Now, how do we conquer sin and death? Where does sin begin at, brothers and sisters? What is the origin of sin? Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 4 and let's read verses 5 through 7. Let's learn something right here. I'm going to learn something too. Watch this. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5 through 7. Here's what it says in verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, the Most High had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Verse 6, And the Most High said unto Cain, Why are you mad? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you do not well, then sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Key in on what he said here in verse 7, because remember, we're talking about sin. And we're going to these verses to find out what the origin of sin is. He says in verse 7, and if you do well, shall you not be accepted? So the Most High is telling Cain, look, if you do righteousness, I will accept you. But if you do sin, then I will reject you. Like I just said before, the wages of sin is death. So he's telling Cain, why are you following after the wages of sin, which will equal death? I'm giving you an opportunity to follow the wages of righteousness, which will lead to life so that I will accept you and not reject you. He says next, and if you do not well, sin lies at the door and unto thee shall be his desire 
and you shall rule over him. So the main things we're learning here in Genesis chapter four, verses five through seven about this situation with Cain and Abel, where Cain's offering was rejected and the most high warned him that sin lies at the door, but that Cain must rule over sin so that he does not receive the wages of sin, which is death. Now, the origin of sin, we're seeing that it comes from within, are we not? Cain made a decision, a decision that he thought out. He had to literally think about disobeying the Most High because he saw Abel take the offering and Abel's offering was accepted. And he chose to do the exact opposite of not giving a righteous offering, but he gave a wicked offering, a rebellious offering. And the reason he did that is because sin was within him. Sin was in his heart. But the Most High warned him that he must rule over sin, which is in the heart. So there was, you could say, an invisible war going on in the heart of Cain that caused sin to rule over him instead of him ruling over sin. So that answers our question that sin, the origin of sin is in the heart and the Messiah himself supports this understanding. When we go to Matthew chapter 15, let's read verses 17 through 19. Here's what it says. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Let me read that again. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Verse 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. All these things proceed forth from the heart. Sin has its origin in the heart. And the Most High told Cain that sin lies at the door and its desire is for him, but he must rule over it. I apologize for my voice being scratchy. It seems like my voice always wants to get scratchy when I'm trying to come in here and bring forth the discussion of the word. I would drink some water, but I don't have any in the room here with me. So we just going to keep going. Now, again, apologies for the scratchy voice. We see here that sin starts in the heart. And the first order that the Most High gave to Cain was he must rule over sin. So using common sense again, we can say that since sin has its origin in the heart and the Most High tells us that we must rule over sin, then it's only but natural for two plus two to equal four, which is that we must rule over our heart. The invisible war is the war in the hearts of men. And that's what I want to speak on today, brothers and sisters. I want to speak on the invisible wars in the hearts of men. There was a song by a group called Mob Deep. And the lyrics of the song went like, there's a war going on outside no man is safe from. You can run, but you can't hide forever. I want to change the lyrics to that song right fast. Instead of saying there's a war going on outside that no man is safe from, I want to say that there's a war going on inside that no man is safe from. The invisible wars in the hearts of men. None of us are safe from this war. Cain wasn't safe from that war. Abel wasn't safe from that war. Even the Messiah himself had to face that war of sin and death and conquer it. The Messiah conquered this invisible war and he's given us a blueprint how to conquer this invisible war. But first I had to lay the foundation of where the origin of this thing is because no wise battle commander attacks without knowing the headquarters of his enemy. We got to know the headquarters of the adversary and the headquarters of the adversary that we need to bomb the place where we need to send the tactical um, intercontinental ballistic missile is to the heart of man because these are the places where the invisible wars take place. These are the headquarters. This is the area that we have to put our in our crosshairs, the hearts of men. 
Listen to what it says here in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 through 6. It says, And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Most High that he had made men on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So here we see, brothers and sisters, that the um, every imagination, not just one, two, three of them, but every imagination of the thoughts of men's hearts is evil continually. <clears throat> this is the war going on inside of us. This is the war inside the hearts of men. This is the invisible war, brothers and sisters. And you and I are fighting that invisible war right now. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 11. Hell and destruction are bo before the Most High. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? So here in Proverbs 15, 11, it's comparing our hearts and the invisible wars inside our hearts. It's comparing it to hell and destruction. So whenever the Most High sees the hearts of men, he sees it as hell and destruction. That's deep, brothers and sisters, because when we think about hell and destruction, you're thinking about torment. You're thinking about people getting hung by the tongue. You're thinking about people getting limbs torn off. You're thinking about people getting stabbed over and over repeatedly by thousands of demons. We're thinking about a bottomless pit of fire. And here in Proverbs 15, 11, the hearts of men is being compared to hell and destruction. So brothers and sisters, in order for us to win this war, it's almost like we have to conquer hell, death, and destruction. But the good news is the Messiah said upon this rock he will build his, his assembly and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. So the gates of our own heart will not prevail against us when we have the truth, the law, and the Messiah as our rock. But nonetheless... Our hearts are like hell and destruction before the Most High. Hosea chapter 7 verse 2 says, And they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. So brothers and sisters, here in Hosea chapter 7 verse 2, the invisible wars in our hearts is being compared to like a fortress or a hindrance that has beset us. The wickedness in our hearts is a stumbling block to our own selves. The invisible wars going on in our hearts. And the Most High knows what's in our hearts. The Messiah knew what was in the hearts of men. As it says in Matthew chapter 9 verse 4, And the Messiah, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Mark chapter 2 verse 8 and immediately when Yeshua perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves he said unto them why do you reason these things in your hearts so brothers and sisters the invisible wars going on in our hearts is a battle of reasoning it's a battle of truth versus falsehood it's a battle of all sorts of wicked perverse rebellious thoughts and many of them are explicit. The explicit thoughts that go on in our mind, brothers and sisters. Do I have to go into details? You know those times when you're praying and you get those just perverse, rebellious thoughts that come from the sin nature in our wicked heart. I mean, you could be praying and all of a sudden a thought will come in your mind that says, F God. You could be praying and all of a sudden a thought will come in your mind of some sort of pornographic image or a lustful act. You could be right in the middle of praying or having a conversation with a brother or sister and a thought will come in your mind like F them. I'll punch them in the face. I mean, or you could be having a conversation or in prayer and a thought can come in your mind like I'll kill them. I mean, the most wicked thoughts that you could ever imagine, brothers and sisters, are inside of our hearts because of sin. Why do you think the Most High posed a lot of these different type of scenarios in the laws and commandments of Torah? 
Why do you think he had to actually say laws like thou shalt not have sex with an animal? Uh, thou shalt not have sex with your sister, your mother, or thou shalt not see the nakedness of your father, this and that. Why would he even have to give us those laws? Shouldn't we already have it within us not to want to have sex with an animal, not to want to have sex with family members, not to want to take part in orgies and not to do all these forbidden taboo things. But the reason he had to actually verbalize these laws and commandments is because of the wickedness in the hearts of men. It is within our nature, brothers and sisters, to think after perverse things, to think after hatreds to think after divisions and strife and contention and debate and lust and murder and fornication and thievery it's already within us to want to steal things from people it's already within us to want to kill people it's already within us to want to satisfy our just most nasty passionate funky lust it's within us to desire after these things so don't feel ashamed or don't feel um paranoid when certain thoughts come into your mind brothers and sisters why do you think that there are people like serial killers those people who are serial killers are the ones who get the same thoughts that all humans beings get to want to kill to want to hurt people to want to rebel these inclinations are in all of us. I don't care how uh, buttoned up your shirt is. I don't care how, uh, how soft spoken you are. I don't care if you wear nice dresses. Those thoughts and inclinations to kill, to lust, and all those depraved things are within us. There's a Jeffrey Dahmer lurking inside all of us, if you want to say in that language. For those who don't know who Jeffrey Dahmer was, he was that dude that killed all those people and ate them. So that type of depravity is in all of us, brothers and sisters. Even the children of Israel, when they were going through the famine, would kill and eat each other. Some people would eat their own children. And these are the quote unquote chosen people. These are the quote unquote holy people who went to that depth of depravity. Why? Because those taboo, dark uh, satanic evil inclinations are in all of us those dark thoughts are in all of us if we don't rule over them we could end up being that next serial killer or that next cannibal or that next psychopath or sociopath because those inclinations are in all of us we just have to learn to do what the most high told Cain to do which was to rule over sin because sin's desire is toward us sin is a stalker brothers and sisters you could say that sin is an obsessed stalker sin doesn't care that you've been baptized sin doesn't care that you read the scripture it will still have a desire towards you so until we get that glorified body we are involved in an invisible war over our own hearts over sin and we must rule over it brothers and sisters this is the invisible war these wicked thoughts that come to you those thoughts that the demons put in your mind to try to make you betray people to try to make you hate people that try to make you search for flaws and weaknesses in people that try to make you prey on people take advantage of people these are the thoughts that these spirits put in your mind so don't get paranoid when you're trying to focus on the most high and all these worldly thoughts start bombarding you you could be sitting there reading scripture and a thought could come in your head like man i really want some oral sex right now or man you could get a vision of you know some woman or for the sisters some man you know pop up in your mind that you had sex with years ago and you start thinking about them like man i should get him a call just to get that one last nut i'm serious i gotta be explicit because the demons are explicit the demons are not censored whenever they are given those thoughts in our mind i mean the demons the demons will try to tempt you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. They will put thoughts in your mind like F God, F, F, F you, F everybody, F the universe, I'll kill you. All these type of thoughts that you have seen in these movies like The Exorcist and all that, even though many of those movies are trash. We have to understand that we're dealing with unclean spirits, brothers and sisters. 
Why do you think they're called unclean spirits? Because every thought that they present to you is just trifling, nasty, funky, depraved, low down, dirty, wicked. Just without me having to go into any details, just think of just the depravity of the mind like there was a news story that came out a few months ago of a couple that had killed this man and then they had an orgy on his corpse. I'm talking about that type of depravity. I'm talking about the type of people who have sex with dead bodies and all this other type of madness. Brothers and sisters, these inclinations that make these people do that come from sin and it comes from the heart. Somewhere along the line, they did not learn how to conquer sin and rule over their heart. So instead of being victorious over the sin and the invisible wars in their heart, they became a victim of the invisible wars in their heart. You see, that's why the Most High tells us to examine ourselves, to bring into subjection the thoughts of the mind and the heart. As it says in Romans 8:27, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. You see, brothers and sisters, we have to have the same type of mentality that Levi had. And I'm going to go to some scriptures here in the Testament of Reuben from the books, the Tetra Testament of the Patriarchs, because I'm going to talk about how Levi, the Patriarch Levi, conquered many of the wicked thoughts in his heart. And how him and the Messiah are good examples that we can learn from and draw strength from how you and I can begin to conquer the wicked thoughts that are formed within us. These dark thoughts, how we can win these invisible wars because there's visible wars and then there are invisible wars. Today, I want to speak about how do we conquer these invisible wars in the hearts of men. But let's go to the Testament of Reuben chapter six and let's read verses 9 through 12 listen to what it says here it says i adjure you by the elohim of heaven to do truth each one unto his neighbor and to entertain love each one for his brother and draw ye near to levi in humbleness of heart that ye may receive a blessing from his mouth for he shall bless israel and judah because him hath the most high chosen to be king over all the nation and bow down before his seed listen to this last sentence for on our behalf it will die in wars visible and invisible and will be among you an eternal king. So here, brothers and sisters, it says that Levi had an anointing to where he would fight in wars, visible and invisible. And to Levi, we know that to Levi was given the priesthood. So here is our first key of knowledge that by the power of the priesthood, do we win and conquer the wars that are invisible let me say that again brothers and sisters through the power of the priesthood do you and i gain victory in wars that are visible and invisible now what priesthood am i talking about i'm talking about revelation chapter 1 verse 6 starting at verse 5 where it says yeshua unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto the most high and his father so you see brothers and sisters through the blood of yeshua we have been made a priesthood and this is the same priesthood similar to levi to where levi won victory in wars visible and invisible i'm talking about the priesthood of first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar a peculiar people that's the priesthood i'm talking about brothers and sisters you and i are part of the priesthood that we must fight wars in the invisible realms we must fight in these wars of the heart just like levi did Let's go to the book of Joseph and Asenath, 
chapter 23, verse 8 through 9, and let's learn more about this, uh, this priestly anointing that was on Levi for him to have victory in wars that were visible and invisible. Because we're going to use Levi as a template, as a symbol, if you will, that you and I can look to, just like the children of Israel look to the bronze serpent and they were healed, you and I are going to look to the examples of Levi and the Messiah of how we gain wars over, uh, we gain power over the wars that are visible and invisible. Listen to what it says here in the book, Joseph and Asenath, chapter 23, verse 8 through 9, it says, and Levi saw the intention of his heart because Levi was a prophet and he was sharp sighted with both his both his mind and his eyes and he used to read what was written in the heart of men did y'all catch that it said Levi was a prophet and he saw the intention of his heart for he was sharp sighted with both his mind and his eyes and he used to read what is written in the heart of men so Levi had an anointing that you and I need to pray for that we receive through the gifts of the Holy Spirit and through the blood of Yeshua that you and I can see the intentions of the heart the intentions of our own heart and also the intentions of other people's heart so that like Levi we can have the gift of prophecy and be sharp sighted with both our mind and our eyes and so that we can read what is written in the hearts of men that's how we begin, brothers and sisters, to win these invisible wars. We must be sharp sighted with our mind and our eyes, and we must discern the spirits and discern the hearts. We must be able to discern the heart of a matter and get to the root of the wickedness that is trying to conquer us. You see, many of us fight many different generational curses. We all have that same dark depraved sin nature but many of us struggle with different aspects of it so what you are fighting in your war may be different than what I'm fighting in my war just like you have different branches of the military air force marines navy so to speak some fight on land some fight in water but it's the same wars likewise brothers and sisters you and I are fighting the war on different fronts but we're in the same battle so all of us, no matter what we're fighting, we must learn to be able to discern the root of the matter. We need to be able to discern if the root of the sin we battle is lies. Some people just can't resist telling lies. It's their, in their generational curse to be liars. So that's the war they fight. Some are fornicators. Some have been raised by people who are womanizers. Some have to fight a battle of trying to resist um, seeking after forbidden knowledge some people just can't take their face out of a book about witchcraft and new age and always trying to search for some secret and all that there's many different temptations some of us are tempted to sex some of us are tempted to knowledge and the enemy used both of those things in the garden to overcome adam and eve he used sex and knowledge so pleasure and wisdom the enemy can use as a temptation but Whatever the temptation being set before us, we must be able to discern the root of it to uproot it. We must know where the enemy's headquarter is so that we can put it in the crosshair and send a tactical nuke to blow it up. You see what I'm saying? We have to have this Levi anointing to where we can read and discern the deepest heart. Like it says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, call unto the most high and he will answer you and show you deep and mighty things that you have not known. The most high is a revealer of mysteries and he will reveal to you the secrets of war in these invisible wars that we fight. Let's go to uh, the book of Joseph and Asenath, chapter 26. Let's read verses 5 through 7, and let's read about a situation where a war was about to pop off, and Levi used his gifts and abilities of discernment to be able to discern the heart of the matter to gain victory in that war. Listen to what it says here. And Asenath and the 600 men with her came to the place of Wadi, and suddenly those who lay in ambush rushed out of their ambushes and joined battle with Asenath's men. 
and cut them down with the edge of the sword, and they killed all her forerunners. But Asenath fled ahead with her carriage, and Levi the son of Leah perceived all these things in his spirit as a prophet, and he declared the danger in which Asenath was to his brothers the sons of Leah. And each of them took his sword and put it on his thigh, and they took their shields and put them on their arms, and they took their spears in their right hands and pursued after Asenath in rapid course. So here, brothers and sisters, we have a situation where Levi was in a whole other part of the city. And Asenath, the, his sister-in-law, the wife of Joseph, was getting attacked. Now, even though Levi wasn't there, he saw it in his spirit, the war that was taking place. In other words, he saw into the invisible battlefield. The Most High gave him a mind to perceive the invisible battlefield. And because he had that insight into the ambush, he had an insight into the ambushes of the enemy. That's what you and I need to do, brothers and sisters. We need to see the ambushes that the adversary has placed in our hearts and minds. We need to see the ambush and the danger that is coming against us in these invisible wars of the heart. Why do you think the main aspect of the Messiah's ministry was casting out demons? Essentially what he was doing was going to war with the ambushes inside the hearts of men. Going to war against the strongholds inside the hearts of men. Going to war against these wicked thoughts and depraved inclinations and depraved taboo sinful satanic desires in our hearts that are like ambushes against us these are the things the messiah went to war against now are you starting to see brothers and sisters now are you starting to see this invisible battlefield and these invisible wars that we fight because just like levi you and i are priests just like judah you and i are kings we are kings and priests and we must have victory success and conquer our destiny on these invisible battlefields in these invisible wars these invisible wars of the mind like it says in the book of the war scroll chapter 15 verse 12 through 15 it says come strengthen yourselves for the battle of the most high for this day is an appointed time of battle for the most high judgment upon all flesh the Elohim of Israel is raising his hand in his wondrous strength against all the spirits of wickedness the mighty ones of the gods are girding themselves for battle and the formations of the holy ones are readying themselves for a day of vengeance so brothers and sisters today is the day of vengeance where you and I need to take vengeance against the ambushes that the enemy has set up in our hearts and minds we must declare absolute war on the invisible ambushes strongholds of sin and the gates of hell and death that have been fortified in our hearts and minds we must declare war on these depraved wicked thoughts we must be conquerors. We must be LeBron, Kobe Bryant's, Alexander the Great's, Genghis Khan's, King David's, Samson's, and Gideon's against these invisible wars of the mind. We must be great dictators and great conquerors over the masses of wicked spirits in our minds because the scripture says that the most high has raised his hand in wondrous strength against all the spirits of wickedness in other words just like those brothers in the 1960 olympics stood on the platform raising their fist in triumph for solidarity of the hebrew oppressed people the most high by the holy spirit stands up inside of our hearts and raises the fist of victory on the platform of the blood of yeshua hamashiach and he declares that we have victory over the ambushes of our heart and over our mind like it says in ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 through 12 finally my brethren be strong in the most high and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of yah that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places you see brothers and sisters we wrestle we wrestle just like our ancestor Jacob wrestled Jacob also wrestled with a 
invisible spirit. Jacob, our ancestor, also wrestled in an invisible war. Let's go to Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, and let's learn how Jacob got his victory over his wrestlings. Because you and I are wrestling, brothers and sisters. It's like the World Wrestling Federation, but that wrestling you see on TV is fake. But the wrestling that we do inside of us in these invisible wars is real. So we must be like ultimate warriors. We must be like the rocks. We must be like Hulk Hogan's over our own heart and over our own mind. Just like Jacob was. Jacob wrestled that spirit down. As it says in Genesis chapter 32 verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said let me go for the day breaks. And he said I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him what is your name? And he said Jacob. And he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for as a prince hast thou power with the most high and with men and has prevailed so you see brothers and sisters you and I have the anointing of Jacob where Jacob wrestled with that spirit he wrestled all night but he overcame it likewise brothers and sisters you and I have to wrestle and overcome you and I have to gain victory over these spirits in our wrestling match because we are in an invisible war we are in a wrestling match that is an undeniable fact because the scripture just told you in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers we wrestle just like Jacob did and we wrestle just like our brother Job did we wrestle with these things brothers and sisters but we must overcome just like Job did. Let's go to the book of Job. Let's go to uh, chapter 6 verses 26 and let's read all the way through verse 31. Listen to what it says here. This is when Job was wrestling with Satan. It said, then he, talking about Satan, then Satan went from behind my wife and placed himself before me crying and said, Job, I yield and give way to you who are but flesh while I am a spirit. You are plague stricken, but I am in great trouble for I am like a wrestler contesting with a wrestler who has in a single handed combat torn down his antagonist and covered him with dust and broken every limb of his, whereas the other one who lies beneath has having displayed his bravery, gives forth sounds of triumph, testifying to his own superior excellence. In this way, you, O Job, are beneath and stricken with plague and pain, and yet you have carried the victory in the wrestling match with me, and I yield to you. Then he left me abashed. Now, my children, do you also show a firm heart in all the evil that happens to you, for greater than all things is firmness of heart. Now, that's a powerful story given to us by our brother Job, where Job was wrestling with Satan. And it said there that it got to the point where Satan told Job, hey, I'm tired of wrestling with you. You are like a man who is on bottom where all your limbs are broken, but still you cry out in triumph. And it said that Satan yielded to Job, meaning Satan just gave up. Why? Because Job wrestled just like Jacob wrestled, to conquer those invisible wars of the heart and mind. Job never betrayed the Most High, even through all that trial. He wrestled that spirit down. He, ha he had victory over his own heart, over the sin in his own heart. So you and I need to learn a lesson from Jacob, from Job, from Levi, how we discern these spirits and discern the root of bitterness and discern the root of iniquity and wrestle that spirit down and gain victory over it in these invisible wars like it says in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 through 6 it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the most high and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is filled so that's given us the the second key of knowledge brothers and sisters that the way 
we rule over sin in our heart and win these invisible wars is through obedience. Obedience is like a nuclear weapon in the spirit realm. Whenever we obey the Most High, we receive the wages of righteousness, which is life. Whenever we disobey the Most High, we receive the wages of sin, which is death. It can't get more simple than that. So either we're going to be like Abel or either we're going to be like Cain. Either we're going to rule over sin and win these invisible wars or sin is going to rule over us and we're going to lose these invisible wars. And I've never liked being a loser because my Elohim is undefeated. So just like the Most High Yah is undefeated, I also want to be undefeated. Because the scripture says that the Most High has led us to always triumph in Christ. So we triumph in these visible wars, but we must also seek to triumph in these invisible wars, these invisible wars of the heart. Like it says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 10, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the most high, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So brothers and sisters, we must hold that double-edged sword, that double-edged sword of the spirit of truth and cut deep into our hearts because the scripture says that the word of the most high is true and living sharper than any two-edged sword and cuts even to the division of soul and spirit of joints and a marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so only by obedience and by the sword of the most high and the sword of truth the same sword that Jeremiah handed to our brother uh, Judah Maccabees whenever Judah Maccabees went and fought against those Greeks and won those wars. The same golden sword, the sword that cuts deep to the heart, the same sword spoken of in Luke chapter 2 verse 35 where it says, yea, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. This is the sword of truth. This is the sword of Yah that pierces to the heart, brothers and sisters. And by this sword, you and I will conquer in these invisible wars. Like it says in the book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 14, verse 34 through 35, it says, If therefore you will rule your mind and instruct your heart, you will be preserved while you live and obtain mercy after death. So the way that we rule our mind and instruct our heart is through the laws and commandments of Torah and through obedience to the Most High Yah and by worshiping in spirit and in truth and by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Let's go to the book of Sirach chapter 21 verse 11. It says the man who keeps the law controls his thoughts. So by keeping the law, by worshiping in spirit and in truth, we control our thoughts. We dominate these invisible wars. We win championships in the spirit, brothers and sisters, by obeying the laws and commandments of the Most High. Let's go to 2nd Esdras chapter 7 verse 57 through 58. It says, this is the meaning of the battle that every man born on earth must fight. That if he is beaten, he will suffer what you have said. But if he is victorious, he will receive what I say. Let's go to 2nd Esdras chapter 7 verse 92 and 93. And it says, the first order is that they have striven with much toil to conquer the wicked thought that was formed with them. So that it should not lead them away from life life to death. So brothers and sisters, the first order of business is that you and I must strive. We must strive and strive and strive and strive and strive and strive to conquer the wicked thought that is formed within us. We must win these invisible wars by conquering these wicked thoughts. The same wicked thoughts that I spoke of earlier in the discussion. Those same wicked blasphemous thoughts that the the demons put in your mind talking about f god i'll kill him i want to have sex i'm hungry gluttony thievery all these wicked defiled depraved thoughts all these serial killer uh just sinful thoughts whatever the enemy puts inside you we must conquer these wicked thoughts that are formed within us this is the invisible war brothers and sisters this is the war we fight but Here's what we must do. 
It says here in the scripture, let a man be faithful. Let him be able to expound a deep saying. Let him be wise in the discernment of words. Let him be strenuous in deeds. Let him be pure. For so much the more ought he to be lowly in mind in proportion as he seemeth to be the greater. And he ought to seek the common advantage of all and not his own. For the temperate understanding repels all these malignant passions. So it's saying that we must have a temperate temperate, disciplined mind. It's saying here in the scripture that only a disciplined, temperate mind understands how to repel all these malignant passions, all these malicious thoughts, all these depraved, dark, uh, taboo thoughts that the demons put in your mind. For it says the temperate mind masters even this for the temperate mind is able to be superior to the passions for at the time when the most high created man he implanted within him his passions and moral nature and at that time he enthroned above all the holy leader mind through the medium of the senses and he gave a law to this mind by living according to which it will maintain a temperate and just and good and manly reign. So we must have a very manly alpha male type reign and victory over these invisible wars in our hearts. It says in such a way as that any of you may not be able to root out desire, but reasoning will enable you to avoid being enslaved to it. One may not be able to root out anger from the soul, but it is possible to withstand anger. And one of you may not be able to eradicate malice, but reasoning has forced to work with you to present you yielding to malice. For reasoning is not an eradicator, but an antagonist of the passions. For the temperate mind has power to conquer the pressure of the passions and to quench the fires of excitement and to wrestle down the pains of the body, however excessive, and through the excellency of reasoning to dominate all the assaults of the passions. So you see, brothers and sisters, we must dominate all the assaults of the passions of the heart with our temperate mind and a disciplined mind is how we dominate in these invisible wars. You see, are y'all understanding this now? I'm going to end this discussion with reading to you the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 1 through 12, and Psalm, chapter 51. But I left my Apocrypha in the other room, so I'm going to be right back, and we're going to conclude this discussion. While I'm gone going to get this Apocrypha, think about all these things we've spoken on thus far. Let it edify you. Hold on for a moment. My apologies, brothers and sisters. The book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 1 through 12, has given us more keys of how to overcome these wicked thoughts and win these invisible wars. It says, the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 1, It is not so with the man who applies himself and studies the law of the Most High. So the first key is given us to win these invisible wars is we must apply ourselves. We must study the law of the Most High. Through the law is how we learn discipline of the mind. Like the other scriptures I read from the book of Sirach where it talks about how the man who knows the law can control his thoughts. So it is by the laws and commandments of the Most High that we're able to control these wicked thoughts. It says, he searches out the wisdom of all the ancients and busies himself with prophecies. So the second key is we must continue to seek out the Most High's wisdom so that we can rule over these wicked thoughts. Verse 2, he observes the discourses of famous men and penetrates the intricacies of figures. He searches out the hidden meaning of Proverbs and acquaints himself with the obscurities of figures. So key number
number three is we must continue to search out the hidden meanings of the Most High's Proverbs and parables. All the words that the Messiah and the Prophet spoke, we must continue to build precept upon precept and search out the hidden meanings of these things. It says if we do these things, we will be rewarded. It says he will serve among great men and appear before rulers. He will travel through the lands of strange peoples and test what is good and what is evil among men. He will devote himself to going early to the Most High, his maker, and will make his entreaty before the Most High. So that's key number four, where we must devote ourselves to prayer and seeking the Most High early and being watchers. Like the Messiah said, blessed is he who watches so that when I come, I may find him doing the work. What does it mean to be a watcher? It means to be a watchman, to be up early, even before sunrise, praying, fasting, studying the scriptures. That's the way we begin to rule over these wicked thoughts. That's the way we begin to rule over these depraved passions and win these invisible wars. And it says he will open his mouth in prayer and make entreaty for his sins. So that's key number five. We need to always repent in prayer. Repentance is the way we conquer these wicked thoughts. We must repent of them. We Whenever we get those wicked thoughts pop in our mind, we must immediately say, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. We must make Satan flee the moment he plants, plants those thoughts in your minds, like telling you F God and all these uh, sexual thoughts and blasphemies. Immediately tell him to go on somewhere in the name of Yeshua. Here's what it says. He will be filled with the spirit of understanding. He will pour out his wise sayings and give thanks to the most high in prayer. He will direct his counsel and knowledge and study his secrets. He will reveal instruction in his teaching and will glory in the law of the most high's agreement. Many will praise his understanding and it will never be blotted out. His memory will not disappear and his name will live for endless generations. Nations will repeat his wisdom and the congregation will utter his his praise so you see brothers and sisters that's the reward of the man who conquers these invisible wars his wisdom will be respected people will go to him for counsel and most of all his name will be written in the Lamb's book of life and he will conquer the wicked thoughts that were formed within him now let's go to Psalm chapter 51 because this verse right here is a weapon against the forces of darkness I try to pray this prayer every day so that I can continue to rule over my passions and wicked thoughts and to have victory in these invisible wars. Listen to what David prayed here. Psalm chapter 51. Have mercy upon me, O Most High, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Most High, thou Elohim of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Most High, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O Most High, thou wilt not despise. Do good and thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with a burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. So did you hear that beautiful prayer that David prayed? He asked the Most High, search my inward parts. Search my heart. Help me to have victory in these invisible wars. Try me, Most High. Like he says here, and I'll end on this.
Psalm chapter 19, verse 12 through 14. It says, who can understand his errors? Please cleanse me from secret faults. So I just want to ask the most high right now. Most high, please cleanse me from secret faults and the brothers and sisters listening please cleanse me and the brothers and sisters who are listening please most high forgive us of the wicked thoughts of our heart please make us to be dominant over these dark passions over these demonic thoughts and inclinations and whenever these things pop up in our mind please help us to be great wrestlers of these antagonists please help us to wrestle down these antagonistic spirits and gain victory over them please don't let us be swept away in destruction and let sin and death rule over us but please let us receive the wages of righteousness which is life please let us be people who are obedient and who search out search out your secrets so that we can have victory over these wicked thoughts as it says here in verse 13 of psalm 19 keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have have dominion over me then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O most high my strength and my Redeemer so brothers and sisters I hope that this helps someone today I hope that this will give you strength as you fight these invisible wars so that you can wrestle down and dominate these dark passions, these satanic, sinful, wicked thoughts that are formed against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper because by the blood of Yeshua, by the testimony, by the laws and commandments, by worshiping in spirit and in truth, we will dominate these wicked thoughts and we will gain victory, success and destiny on the invisible battlefield in these invisible wars in the hearts of men. All praise to the Most High. On that note, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom. Y'all be well. I love you.